Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital. Uh, today is uh, Tuesday, July 25th. It's around 7 o'clock New York time. So tomorrow, Wednesday at 2 o'clock Eastern, we'll be getting the FOMC rate decision. Um, expectations are for a 25 basis point rate hike. Uh, you can see that basically the market is giving it a 97% chance. Uh, additionally, the market's weighing about a 50% chance for an additional rate hike before the end of this year. Uh, it appears the market is targeting that November date for a second rate hike. So this is something to watch for tomorrow. Obviously, uh, the market would be surprised if there weren't a 25 basis point rate hike. So it seems likely that the Fed will. And most likely what the market is suggesting from the Fed fund futures, at least, is that Jay Powell and the Fed are likely to leave optionality on the table and indicate that there is likely one more rate hike to come, and that will be dependent on the data. And I will also add that I think that they're likely to indicate that if more needs to be done, they'll do more, um, and that rates are likely to stay you know, high and restrictive for some time until they are sure and confident that the tightness of the labor market is not going to spill into higher inflation rates. Um, Additionally, uh, when we go out and we look at the ECB meeting, that will be on Thursday morning, uh, New York time. You can see 96% chance for a rate hike of 25 basis points come Thursday. And market is pricing in, uh, you know, about an 80% chance that there will be another rate hike before year end. Again, I think Lagarde is also going to leave that optionality on the table. And um, you're not going to likely see much deviation between the two central banks, I think, this week. Um, and so that will take us to a, a review of where we are right now. We'll start off with the uh, NASDAQ because I think that we finished with the NASDAQ last night and we were talking about a couple of interesting things. Uh, the first thing being that we had been above the upper Bollinger Band for some time. You can clearly see now we've come back in to that Bollinger Band now. This is uh, the fourth day that we're back into it. Uh, so certainly we're no longer in overbought conditions, uh, at least based on that metric. And here's the 10-day exponential moving average. So yesterday we had noted there had been three days below the exponential moving average, and that had been the longest period of time that we had noticed noticed uh, since really uh, the beginning, the middle of March, that we had been below the 10-day. So today uh, we were talking also last night about you know, the, the appearance of some sort of triangle wedge forming, maybe a descending triangle. Given the week close, I thought that there was a chance we might gap lower and trade lower today. Uh, instead, the market decided to gap higher. Uh, that led to a move up almost about 75 basis points on the day. It took us to uh, a rough resistance area uh, of around, right around this 15,600 region. Um, now, clearly, uh, again, we had a, a pretty weak close. It seems like we've been getting these strong openings followed by weak closes. This seems to be a, reg a rather regular occurrence lately. You can see that even on Friday we had a strong open and then we had a weak close. Monday we had a strong open and a weak close. Today we had a strong open, rallied all day. We finished above the, uh, above the opening print. But we basically finished almost flat to the high of the early, almost flat to the early high. So again, these are these seem to be like movements that we're seeing where you're getting these strong openings and then you're giving back in the final hour or two of trading. And, and again, tomorrow will be a different day because you're obviously going to have an FOMC meeting, and that's potentially is going to skew how the market reacts. Now, uh, again, you've also had uh, some pretty big earnings out after hours. At least as of this recording, you have the NASDAQ trading down about 25 basis points or so, nothing terrible. So that would indicate that we're likely looking at, at least as of right now, a lower opening. So if the bulls want to continue to remain in charge here, uh, you're going to want to see the NASDAQ you know, gap higher again, uh, like we've been seeing, and continue to push higher, which would... Certainly with a gap at 15,825 still lingering, um, again, if the bulls are going to try to push this thing, that seems like a likely area, although that seems really aggressive given the fact that you're going to have an FOMC meeting tomorrow afternoon, plus you already have the markets trading lower. So 
this really creates a little bit of a, an interesting period tomorrow. Um, again, so you're going to be looking for the gap above this 15,600. If you can get that, maybe you can trade a little bit higher throughout the morning. I have a feeling, though, given that we have the FOMC meeting, you're likely to see a fairly range-bound market during the day. If we gap lower tomorrow right off the bat, um, you're likely to see a refill of this gap to 15,450. Um, the interesting thing that I noticed about the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and we're going to tie this in with the DAX, um, is that you can see, again, we talked about this yesterday, being that you have, um, you know, now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve green bars uh, in a row. And what's interesting is that um, this green bar was uh, what you'd call, I guess, a doji pattern, a day of indecision, because the index only really finished up about eight basis points, so barely eked out a gain on the day. Um, the other thing that's obviously interesting here is when you go in and take a look at this pattern, it has a look of a, a potential ending diagonal. And uh, you can even see going into the close, we close below the, the bottom trend line. And here's your top trend. Now, what's interesting is that you also have the same pattern in the DAX currently. Um, and what's interesting, I guess, about it is when you overlay the two charts, um, you'll see that the timing of it, uh, at least on the hourly charts, you'll see that the timing of it is very similar. It, it took the Dow a little bit longer to get up there in terms of uh, with the DAX. Um, but again, it's very it's a very similar sort of look to it where you've been you can see that the two are consolidating in this sort of rising wedge pattern. What could be, you know, a, an ending diagonal triangle, uh, which would be indicative of a, an index that's going to trade lower. So we focused uh, on you know this downward shifting trend line in the DAX, and we don't really have that same downward shifting trend line in the Dow. And so if we use the DAX as sort of a leading indicator potentially to the Dow, um, it could be telling us something about the direction of the Dow. Number one, you have uh, a DAX index here that has traded, you know, again, here's your, your trend line, uh, has almost three quarters of the of the of the characteristics of a diamond pattern again you, you don't have the full characteristics of one but you have three quarters of one you certainly have what looks like a, a pole here and then you have this rising diagonal or rising pennant and this would certainly be indicative of a, a bearish reversal pattern on top of the fact that you have this trend line in place um, Additionally, you've had now pretty bearish momentum overall in the DAX for some times with, you know, the DAX basically lodging, uh, putting in a, a, an RSI of 80 uh, back on November 15th. And really, RSI has just been making lower highs while the DAX has been making higher highs, which is a bearish divergence, although it has been a very long one, uh, which indicates, again, that you're seeing that loss of overall momentum. And you can see that the the, the as the DAX has moved higher, those increases have been on a lower and lower scale. So uh, again, depending on how this is sort of shaping up and setting out, um, you know, if you were to take out this trend line again, we, we talked about this already. But on the DAX, at least, if you were to take this out tomorrow, um, then it seems likely you're going to test 16,270 pretty easily. And I think after that, you're talking about filling this gap up to 16,350. Uh, clearly, a breakdown of this is going to be a very bearish indicator because you have uh, basically a straight line rally from this point on, which means that once you take this out, um, there's a chance you could fall all the way back down to 50. You could start trading all the way back down to 15,800 in, in the coming days. Um, when you look at the Dow, Again, similar looking pattern we just talked about. You can see the ending diagonal. Uh, you can see we closed just a little bit below it. Um, when we look more closely here, you can see again, we're in an overbought condition where you have uh, the RSI over 70, although the Dow has moved back within the upper Bollinger Band, so it's not as overbought as it had been. But again, it is still overbought. And we have what also looks like 
that rising diagonal. So you have these two conditions that are also leaning towards this idea that if you don't get the Dow to quickly snap higher tomorrow, uh, you know, take this level out here at 13,000, call it 500, you know, very quickly, if that can happen, then you have room to at least move back up to 35,550 or so. The, the area in which you're going to start hitting resistance is going to start becoming a little bit of a problem because, uh, again, if you if you move higher tomorrow and, and all of a sudden your next um, your next area of resistance is going to be somewhere in this 35,600 region. So it, it seems like the Dow is again up 12 days in a row. It's due for something in terms of a pullback. Um, it certainly appears like there is a formation of a potential pullback coming here. And when you couple that with the formation in the DAX, it certainly also suggests that we're looking at a pullback. And again, it really is going to depend upon how they can open these markets tomorrow. If we get one of these forceful opens like we've been seeing um, more recently in the Dow, in the S&P, um, then that's going to allow it to continue to move higher. But that's going to also mean that you're going to have to quickly go from around 35,450 to around 35,005 and a quarter uh, as soon as we open tomorrow. If you can get a nice 7,500 point pop in the Dow quickly, you can continue to move higher, maybe even trade along this upper trend line, maybe trade along the upper Bollinger Band. Um, but if you can't uh, and you're looking at a move lower, which is, let's face it, becoming more and more of an odd as every day that you trade higher because markets don't go don't only go higher, that would potentially set you up for a decline back to 35,220. Uh, and then you have these gaps at 35,050 and then another gap at 34,950. And then of course, a, a, retra a total retracement back to 34,580 or so. So um, that's where we are right now. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.